Let's turn our Bibles this morning to the book of 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians, and we've been uh, going through some of these... Um, Going through some of these places, we've been kind of going in, in a portion. I, I, I wanted to get to something, um, and as I, you know, sometimes you start looking in the Bible, what we realize, particularly with these epistles, is there's there's a uh, there's a message that's being um, told, right? That's being directed and being taught on by particularly here the Apostle Paul, many of these letters, and sometimes as we look at Sunday School Hour with Jude, I mean, it's like, there's a lot of things, it, yeah, I still, I still laugh about this a little bit, Jonathan said, I don't know, can I, a series on one chapter, right? And, and our series are now like one verse each, no, but it's a couple, it's, sometimes you start to look at this thing, and it's like, well, it's, before I can really get to what's here, I've got to get, I, I kind of got to deal with what he was dealing with here, and you see, well, actually he started back here dealing with that. And then you look, it's like, no, that's the same thing he's dealing with over here. And so you find you got to, so I've had to back up several chapters to get to what I wanted to preach about today. So we've been, we've been preaching a series to get to this message today. <laughs> and so getting to that and seeing, because we need to get the picture. Sometimes, and, and, and Brother Jonathan mentioned it this morning, listen, uh, when we see it in context, it helps us to really understand what God is dealing with. And so we, we find and we want to keep, we want to see what did God intend, what, what was he intending when he was giving us what he gave us? What was he intending for us to grab a hold of? What was he intending for us to, to understand? What's the message that's being given? And so we're, we're going to be dealing with today, really the, 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 the message today is about communion. And we're going to be having a communion service um, Easter, uh, Easter Sunday in the evening service. We're going to be doing it at that time. And so as we've been dealing with this, I want us to get to what have we dealt with. So like I said, we've been spending about, oh, a month and a half to get here. Amen. So you ready? Hold on. All right. 1 Corinthians chapter, chapter 11, verse 17. When you find your place, let's all stand together. as We honor God in the reading of His Word. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 17. We already had a little introduction to that this morning. All right. Amen. Those who are here for the Sunday school hour. Verse 17, it says, uh, Now in this that I declare unto you, I praise you not, that you come together not for the better, but for the worse. Let's pray together as we get started this morning. Father, we're thankful, Lord, for your goodness, thankful for your word, thankful for this truth. Lord, I, I'm, I'm so thankful, God, as you give us your word, you don't leave us to flounder and figure out things. Lord, you've given us so much, and Lord, it's really so much for us. It takes a whole lifetime for us to, 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 to digest and to understand and to live out your word. And Lord, yet you, you help us along the way. You encourage us. You give us direction. You give us purpose. And Lord, I pray that this morning we might be filled with your word. Lord, we might have a desire to be what you want us to be. And we'll thank you for it now. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. I want to deal with number one, the comparative condition. The comparative condition. So when the church, the, the body of Christ comes together, it is for a purpose. Okay? It's, it's for a purpose. And, and that purpose is not to simply enjoy each other's company and fellowship. Okay? The purpose of us gathering together, listen to what I'm saying to you here this morning, the purpose of us gathering together isn't just to uh, enjoy each other's company. Now, um, that does happen. Amen. Uh, and it should happen. It should happen. Amen. We should want to be around God's people. We should enjoy being around God's people. Right? Um, we, we should want to be in each other's company and we should, we should get here and, and we should enjoy. But that's not our purpose. Right? That's kind of... Uh, that's just kind of uh, 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 something that happens along with it. And, and, and something, if, if we come together and we don't like being with each other, then that kind of reveals something's wrong, right? Something's wrong. So, but that's not why we come together. That's kind of a, a side effect that, that happens. So the purpose of the body coming together is for the edification of the body. Keep your place here in Ephesians. We're going to be flipping, I mean, in, in 1 Corinthians. Turn over to Ephesians chapter 4. 
And, and, and when you get there, you want to keep your place there as well, because we're going to go back there a couple times back and forth. I want us to see Ephesians chapter 4, 1 2 Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians. So a couple books over Ephesians chapter 4. And in verse 11, and the Bible says, And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. And he gave some, he's talking about, to, to, to the church. And he deals with that uh, above and around there. And he says this in verse 12. For, or for the purpose, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, Till we all come in the unity of the faith. Till we all come where? In the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive, but speaking the truth in love may grow up into Him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth according to the effectual working and the measure of every part maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. You would think, Brother Jonathan and I were working together this morning, uh, we already kind of hit some of those verses if you're here for Sunday school. Listen, here's what he's talking about here. So the purpose of us coming together, when we come together, it's for the purpose of getting better. Amen? That's what it's talking about, for edification, to grow. To, to, the purpose is to get better. All right? So, so we ought to comparatively become a better body of Christ. Okay, now... When I, I want us to get this concept of comparatively. I don't mean us compared to another church. We're not trying to be better than somebody else. Com, you know, we don't compare ourselves amongst ourselves because that's not wise. So we ought to be compared to ourselves. We ought to be getting better. That's our purpose. As a body, as, as a church, we ought to be getting better. A body, a, 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 we ought to be a better church than we were before. That's the purpose. Amen. We see that, that that is the purpose. But, instead of becoming better, the Corinthian church was becoming worse. Go back, keep your place there in Ephesians if you can. If you've got enough ribbons or whatever. Uh, go back to 1 Corinthians in, in chapter 11. <clears throat> and look at this again in first, verse 17. Now, in this that I declare unto you, I praise you not. Hey, listen. What he he, he wants to make this really clear. Uh, this isn't a um, this isn't a good thing. I, I want to make sure that you understand. I'm not praising you. There's nothing of what it, what he's going to deal with here. This this is not because you've done anything good. This, there's a problem here. Is what he's trying to bring it out. And he says this now. Now in this that I declare and you, I praise you not that you come together not for the better, but for. The worse. Imagine each time that the Corinthian church came together, let's just say every Sunday they came together, they were becoming a worse church. Could you imagine being a part of that church? Every time they got together, it got worse and worse and worse. It was supposed to be edifying. They were supposed to be growing up together. We've seen there in, in, in Ephesians chapter 4. They were supposed to be doing that, but instead of getting better, they were actually getting to be a worse church. They were going in the wrong direction. Um, not forward for Christ, but backward. So, uh, how could that happen? <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. How could, how could getting together as a church, as a body, how could that happen? Well, we've looked at some things, and it was mentioned in Jude, even there in, in Ephesians chapter 4, uh, it was dealing with it a little bit, that there's some things about, well, because there was false teaching. Okay, so you could see that. Uh, there's, there's some other things, but, but this isn't what the Apostle Paul is going to deal with here. This church was becoming worse 
for, for a particular reason. That's the question, the, the, the question, how did that happen? It's what he's going to deal with now in verse 18. Look at there. He says, verse 18, 1 Corinthians eleven eighteen. 18, he says, For first of all, when you come together in the church, I hear there be divisions among you, and I partly believe it. So, number one was the comparative condition. Um, supposed to be getting better instead of worse, but they were getting worse. Number two is this, first of all. First of all. So, he never gets to a second or a third of all. Right? Um, you ever say this, well, there's three things I want to say, and then you never get the second first, and then that becomes so much that you never, well, what was second? I don't know, because it doesn't matter anymore. Right? That's what he does here. When he gets to this first of all, um, the first of all is a phrase that gives it the utmost importance. That, it's not like first in, as an ordinance, or, or an order, I mean, rather like first and uh, uh, second and third. It's first as in this is primary. Okay, this is the primary. First of all, uh, this is the thing that is so crucially important in the church. It's the first of all. The primary thing that is constantly, can I tell you this folks? It's constantly being dealt with by God in the New Testament. Over and over, in all the epistles from the book of Acts on, it's being dealt with over, Not let me rephrase that, even in the Gospels he was dealing with that. Jesus Christ himself was dealing with it over and over and over. All the way into the book of Revelation, we find this thing that he's dealing with. And it's this, he says this in verse, verse 18, For first of all, when you come together in the church, I hear that there be divisions among you. So, the divisions are, are splits or gaps in the church. Now, when I say splits, we think of a, a church split, people leaving off and that kind of thing. Here, but, but here it's more of, not, not in just in that sense, but splits inside the church. Uh, gaps inside a church. Gaps give the idea there's space between people. And I don't mean just the, not, the aisle. <laughs> We're going to look at that in just a second. Instead of the body being one, which which is the foundational purpose of the body, right? Um, the, it's the goal, the way that a church is effective in this world. Instead, there were divisions. Keep your place here and go back over to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, we're back there again. Uh, we're, we're, the, the reason we see this is this, this is another clear place where he deals with some of these things. Chapter 4 and verse 4, he says there is... One body and one spirit, even as you call, you, ye are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all. Uh, one one is, uh, who is above all and through all and in you all. See, this thing of being one in unity, purpose, and goal isn't something that's good. It's not something that's good. It is actually the only way that the church can function Healthy. They said, well, you know, it would be good if we did this. No, no, this isn't, this would be good if we had this. Wouldn't it be good if we were like that? No. He said, listen, this isn't just something that's good. He said, this is God's purpose. It's actually the, the very purpose of having a church. I mean, wow, you know what would be really neat? If we had a church that all got along. No, that's not really neat. That's what it's intended to do. I mean... Sometimes we sometimes what we we, we want to trivialize things. Man, that'd be good if we could just uh, you know this is what God and He deals with it over and over. Sometimes what He deals with over and over because we're not used to seeing it, it. It seems weird, but He's like, man, we're trying to get this thing, trying to get it. Paul said this. He said this. Uh, uh, he said, I partly believe it. Now, um, keep. Keep your place there. We'll probably be back in Ephesians. Back to 1 Corinthians. Uh, should have been just had brought a paper clip. We could just, you know. But um, um, he said there, he said, I partly believe it. Um, back in verse 18, when he, when he heard about this. It, it, listen, can I, can I say this? Everyone hadn't gone in this way. The whole Corinthian church wasn't wasn't like this there was there was most definitely some that had that still wanted to be what god desired them to be amen praise the lord for them 
And so what we're going to see that here in this next verse. Look at verse 19. For there must also, I'm sorry, for there must be also heresies among you, that they which are approved may be man, made manifest among you. Now, heresies. He's going to deal with this thing of heresies. Now, this, world, this word doesn't mean what you think it means. Okay? Um, we, it's often used today when we talk about that word uh, heresy. We talk about one who's gone against God. Right? Um, they, they reject the scriptures. They are infidels or heretics. Right? That's kind of how we, we think of it. But the word properly really means this. It means a choice. It means to make a choice. Um, it's, it's often translated in, our, in, in the Bible as a sect or a group. Uh, Paul would talk about the, the, the sect of the, her, uh, of the Pharisees. He wasn't saying that the Pharisees were heretics. He said they were a group. You see, they, they, had, they had made a choice to group together. Some were Pharisees and others were the sect of the Sadducees and there was others. As a matter of fact, at, at, at another time they called those that followed Jesus Christ those of that way, and that, that sect of those that followed that. As a matter of fact, in one place in the Bible it says those that, of that heresy. That's what it's talking about. And so there's always this, the word itself properly means to make a choice for part of this group. It's to choose sides. To, to group together with those that agree with you. Right? So what was happening in the Corinthian church is that they were that there were there were people that were grouping together in sects or heresies that made the church not one but many or or several groups. Look again verse 19. He says for there must there must be also heresies among you that they which are approved may be made manifest among you. See now so, so here's what, what ended up happening um, is what this did is it made when they would, they would, they would they'd make choices and they would, they would group apart, it made manifest those that were still desiring to follow God. You see, those that were still desiring to follow His purpose, those that were still desiring to follow His plan and His will, it made them manifest because when it started to, to, to separate out, you could see clearly those that were not participating in the schisms, right? Um, the, but the, there were divisions, and so it certainly came to be, listen, he said up there, there were divisions, okay? People started dividing out away from the unity of the church, and so, you know, maybe they said something like, I don't agree with that. Um, by the way, we're, 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 when... And this is where we can get a little bit confused we could, because we see the word heresies. We think, okay, there was false teaching there. That's not what was happening here. That's not what the word heresies means here. What was hap Maybe it was, sometimes we could see even back in the book of Acts, the heresies or what was going on was, or, or should I say the divisions, was the, the Grecian widows weren't getting taken care of. They came up and said, hey, you know, our, our widows aren't getting taken care of. You know, the, 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 the Jewish widows are, but ours aren't. And so, you know what, they, they, they found a place to make, uh, there, there was starting to be a division there. And so the, 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 the apostles said, well, let's, um, we'll find some men among you <laughs> and let, let us choose out some men and let's have some deacons that can make, take care of that need. And, and, and it was resolved, but there began to be a division there, and instead of dealing with it, now there they dealt with it. Amen? Are we ever going to have different opinions? Daily. I mean, because we're all people, <laughs> right? And so what was happening here, this thing, this, we're not talking about they were disagreeing over doctrine, over truth, and over this. They would probably most likely just, now there was some sin in, in uh, Corinth, Okay, we see that through the church. There was all kinds of different sin, and, but they were kind of maybe some say, I think it's okay that we sin, and others were doing some. So there's some problems in that area. But what was happening is when there is divisions, verse 19, there must be also heresies. So, so what that means is when people start dividing out and saying, I, there begins to be those that gather around them and agree with them. Right? 
And somebody else says, no, I, I agree with that. And so some, they gather around. And then others say, you know, I don't agree with either one of them. I think it's a different, and they, gra- they, they gather around. And you'll start seeing groups of people at church, right? You got the, the, the front piano side group, right? Joel's all on his own, right? You, you, got the, you, you, know, you, got, you got the organ side. Well, we don't have an organ, but you got the organ back, sit back, organ side, and they're all sitting together, and they all kind of whisper. I just, right? Right? We got these areas, and people start grouping up, and then afterwards, after church, right? After the, after the meeting, then you got people, certain ones, they group together, and they're talking together, and somebody walks in, and they're like, You know that smile that says, are you leaving? And they're just waiting for you to move on so that they can continue with their conversation. You know, man, oh, we all know that look, though. You know we know that look. When somebody comes up and they look and, and you walk in and everybody stops and they go silent and they're all looking at you like, <laughs> you need something? No, I was just stopping by. Okay. And then, you know, but, but they'll do that. They'll do that thing. You know what I'm saying? Y'all know what I'm talking about. It's a little funny. I try to get that. Make sure y'all with me. But people do that thing. We kind of get this. And he said, listen, because there's divisions, it's, listen, he says there in verse 19, for there must also be heresies. It's got to be. That's, what, that's the way it works. That's the way this thing, that, that thing happens. Um, and so it, was, it, it certainly came to be expected that those people divided would form schisms or cliques or heresies. But it'll become clear. It'll become clear real fast who is staying out of the divisions. Um, so number three, what's the purpose? What's the purpose? Look at verse 20. So what, what is this purpose of this thing? Um, Back in verse, let, let's, before I get to verse 20, look back at chapter 10 and verse 16. The, cl- the cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? For we being many are one bread and one body, for we are all partakers of that one bread. So we, so we begin that back there, we see what he's leading into, and now there, there's this thing that's going on. And he's about to be teaching on this. Now, verse 20 says this. So when ye come together, therefore, into one place, that is not to eat the Lord's Supper. So when we see this event taking place here in Corinth, it is a bit, it is a bit different than what we experience today. Okay, what, what they were doing at that time. Um, remember, it was... Um, during that time in the early church, and we, we, we were talking about this here, it's probably about 59, 60 A.D., right around that time. Um, it was a day of, of challenge and difficulty for, for the believer. Okay, very difficult time. There was still much persecution and suppression for the believer. So there's, there's an environment going on that, that made things a little bit challenging. Many were poor and without means to live well. And so we find that even though there's people selling their homes, people trying to meet, they were meeting daily at some times at different things, house to house, maybe checking on the needs of people. That's so much. That's why they, there was this great, huge uh, issue with the, with the widows. A lot of things were going on in that day. So in, in, in the pagan worship of their day and of their past, the rich would offer meat to their gods. Now, he just dealt with that. He just dealt with that already. So, so they're already, this is all very common in that place. They, so they would, they would offer meat to their, to their gods. Then afterwards, that meat was often distributed to the poor. Right? So, so you know, one would offer their meat to their gods and ask some favor. And when that, now, I, I can't take that back because I offered it. And so they would take that part of it, a portion of it would be sold in the markets. Others would be given out to the poor because now there's this, there's this whole thing. Um, it was, um, and so this is kind of how, how that was going. It was um, in that, in that kind of way. So the, the early church in Corinth followed some of the similar ways by continuing to help the poor by doing what they already knew to do. Okay? So, so here's what happens. A lot of times... All of us, before we got saved, now, now if you got, particularly if you got saved later in life, uh, as, as an adult, as a, you know, there's things that you used to do, 
right? Your life, living without Christ, living how you live. And then you get saved. And you know, uh, old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new, but it's not overnight. So you come into this life with all of that you always did, right? And you don't just say, okay, now that I crossed this line, I'm never, ever, ever doing any things that I ever did before. Um, now, it'd be good if a lot of times if we did that, but that's not how life works. So now we've got this new life, and now we're going to try to live, okay, now I've got all my life, but now I'm going to try to add Christ in there. And so this is why it's a work in progress, isn't it? That's why we've got to give people grace. We really do. Because we're all a work in progress. And so we're trying to grow from that. But, but so they had some of those, those things. It's like, you know, is, is it good to take, you know, listen. Um, there's nothing wrong with it continuing to help the poor people. Well, now that I'm saved, I don't help poor people anymore. That'd be weird, wouldn't it? I mean, the Bible commends us to, to, to have be, that kind of behavior, to help the poor and, and, and the fatherless and, 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 and these kind of things, the orphans and poor and widows and all these. We're, we're still, the Bible commends us to do those things, so it's not like, well, what, before I was saved, I used to help poor people, now I just keep it to myself. That'd be weird. It'd be kind of like, man, I liked you better when you are lost. You helped me. You know, I mean, this, there's some, some kind of thinking there. So, so we find, though, we, we kind of, they're coming into this, and now and there's some change. We're in, we're in the city of Corinth, many, many of these Greeks, and, and, and they were once pagans. So we find here in verse 20 the term, the Lord's Supper. Look again at verse 20. When you come together, therefore, into one place, look what it says here. This is, what's that next word? Not to eat the Lord's Supper. So this is the only place in the Scriptures where we find this terminology, the Lord's Supper. We don't find that anywhere else. Never, ever, anywhere else is it ever used that phrase as the Lord's Supper. We don't hear about that again. It's, it's just this one place right here. Um, it, when it was likely, and, and Brother Jonathan mentioned this morning, I agree with what he was saying, it's, 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 it's likely speaking of the meal that would take place either before or after the ordinance of communion. Okay, this is what was happening. It was primarily, or, or, or I believe, and when you study this, I think it, it leads to, it was probably more likely that meal that went with this thing. Um, but in their attempt, the Corinthian church's attempt to imitate a feast or, or a potluck, you say potlucks came from the pagans? Probably. Okay? They had some things that were okay. Anyhow, anyway, y'all get that later. Okay, so... And their attempt to imitate that feast or that potluck to, and, and to help the poor, it turned into something else. So, so they, they, they repeated this, say, hey, you know what? At my last church, we used to do this. You ever said that? Guilty, right? We all say that. My last church, they did this. Or I heard about another church that did this. And, and we, you know, that's the thing about a church. We come in and everybody wants to bring all their last things together. Right? And that, it's not a bad thing. It just can become... <laughs> You know, we all had great ideas somewhere, but all of our great ideas don't kind of go together. And so they said, you know what we used to do, there's poor people, what we used to do, we would do that and then we would kind of have a, a feast and we would kind of give and invite for, poor folks. And so it was a great way to kind of take care of and meet that need, right? And so, um, so doing that, they would say, let's do that before we, you know, when we're doing this, let's get together and let's do that thing. But in their attempt to do that in the same manner, it ended up being something that caused divisions instead of unity. So they weren't, what ended up happening though, they weren't using it to come together, they were using it to divide apart. Look, look at verse 21. Here's what Paul is telling them that. He says, For eating, for in eating, Everyone taketh before other his own supper, and one is hungry, and another is drunken. So, what they ended up doing is they were using this time to actually do damage to the church. What was maybe at one time was it was a good idea, was maybe helpful, maybe maybe positive, maybe it did some things. What ended up happening now? is it became something that instead of being something that made the church better, it was making it worse. 
Because what they were doing is they were getting together, and instead of having a potluck, y'all like potlucks? Sometimes. Some potlucks are scary. I've heard people say potluck is called luck because you're lucky if it doesn't make you sick. I, I don't know. You know, uh, there's some things, you know, uh, you'll get in there. I, and I know some people like, you know, and I'm going to bring my dish into potluck, but the only thing I'm going to eat is my own food. Well, that kind of misses the whole idea of unity, doesn't it? Kind of miss. I'm going to... I'm going to bring some stuff together. We're going to get together. We're going to do this thing. And so what ended up happening here is there was this situation where they would bring it together, but then they would keep it and set it before them or within their heresy, within their group. Hey, you ever, you ever seen this? Uh, hey, I, I got these, uh, these chocolate peanut butter things this you got it there's only but come here here yeah because there's not gonna be enough for everybody and so they bring them down and everybody's grabbing like two one in their pocket one in the mouth right and then they come back and there's like three left and put it yeah here's for the rest of y'all oh man or like with fried chicken you know what i'm saying i'm gonna give you the chicken leg give you the wing but you're gonna get the breast or the you know i'm gonna give you the thigh you know and oh Oh, you, so I'm going to tongue you the right one. See, so this is what was going on. Or, or maybe it was what they were doing here is they had their own supper before. So, so you see, I'm not making this up. Y'all see that? I mean, I'm maybe adding fried chicken and, and, and chocolate stuff to it. But there's some things going on here. And they said, for, for in eating, everyone taketh before other his own supper. It takes it before, while everybody's there, I'm going to eat my own stuff. I'm coming in with steak and caviar while they're over there eating some Vienna sausages out of a can. Yeah, I like Vienna sausages. Nobody likes Vienna sausages. You eat them because that's all you could afford, and then you got used to it. Right? Um, and so they're over there. Yeah, no, they like that stuff. Like, we're over here eating a steak, medium well. I mean, medium, just medium, and it's got just a little juice. Y'all getting hungry now? And you're eating that thing. And somebody's over there, and they're like, no, no, they like those Vienna saw. They, could, they wouldn't know how to digest. I mean, see what's going on. Something is happening here, and, and there's a problem going on. And they were using this time to do damage. It says, for in eating, everyone taketh before his own supper. And one is hungry, and another is drunken. What it means, not drunken and, and, and necessarily and intoxicated, but drunken as in gluttonous, overfull. They're like, oh, man, I couldn't eat another bite. I'm going to throw the rest of this away. And there's people over there that are still hungry. But look what it says in verse 22 then. He says, what? What's Paul saying to this Corinthians? What? Have you not houses to eat and drink in? Or despise ye the church of God and shame them that have not? What shall I say to you? I, shall I praise you in this? I praise you not. Because he's ticked off now, I think. This is kind of what I It's like, what is wrong with you people? Don't you have a place to go eat at home? Can't, what, do you so despise the church that you're going to shame God's people? You think I'm going to praise you? Well, they had, the, they had this supper together. No, I'm not praising you. I praise you not. I, I, just, I mean, this is, this is uh, Baptist cussing right here. That's about, I mean, he's, just, he's mad. I mean, you know what I'm saying, not cussing. I Maybe mean, I shouldn't say. This is, this is Baptist biblical anger right here. It's like, what is wrong with you people? By the way, that's, to the, that's not to the world. That was to the church. Something's wrong. No wonder, though, churches quit having this meal before the communion altogether. It was causing problems. Well, we should do that again. I don't know. They were doing it, and it, it twists. You know, let's not think of ourselves as so well that we can do what others couldn't do. You know, let's, there's some things that just kind of seem to disappear. He said, go home and eat. Go home and eat. Don't, don't shame your fellow church members by, by division and heresies. And, so this is to despise the church of God. He says it causes divisions. So number four then, the proper purpose. Proper purpose. Verse 23. He says, for I have received of the Lord... That which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he, had, when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, 
which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. After the same manner, also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. So the apostle uh, Paul wasn't, um, wasn't there when this original event took place. He wasn't there. He wasn't, he wasn't in the upper room. He wasn't in that place. This was told him by the Lord. That's what he said in verse 23. For I have received of the Lord that which I delivered. He said, I, I wasn't there, but I, I, God told me, the Lord Jesus Christ told me about this, and I'm going to share that with you. This is the only passage. <laughs> this is what's really odd. This is the only passage in the Scripture where we're told about observing this ordinance. This is it. This is our whole context of one of the ordinances, of one of the two ordinances of our church. This is the only context of it being observed uh, there. Look at verse 2, though. Chapter 11, verse 2. He says this, For I praise you, brethren, that ye remember me in all things and keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. Um, so this was something that the apostle had given as an ordinance. Well, the reason he gave it as an ordinance is because the Lord gave it to him, right? The Lord gave it to him this way, and obviously the Lord gave it to this in way. The word ordinance really means this. It means it was meant to be transmitted. It was meant to be passed along as a tradition to follow, okay? That's, that's the idea of the, the word ordinance. So the instruction, though limited, but the practice is to be maintained, Okay, this is what we find. And he commended. That's one thing. He, I commend you that you're doing this, but you're doing it wrong. I commend you that you're doing it, but I'm not going to praise you for how you're doing it. It's what he, what he dealt with in that place. So we must then, from the context of this passage, both before where he's talking about this and after, discern the intent of this ordinance from, from this one place. So in the Gospels, there wasn't instruction what to do in the future, it was the event that they're now imitating. Okay, and let's go, let's look at that first event again. Keep your place here in First Corinthians, go back to Luke chapter 22. Um, we're going to go back and look at the, the there, this wasn't uh, instruction uh, on, on how to actually observe it, but this is the actual event. Uh, that we're now imitating when we, when we remember, as, as the Apostle Paul said there, when we re remember these things. So Luke chapter 22, verse 14, he says this. And when the hour was come, I'm sorry, let me, let me let the rest of y'all get there. I still heard your pages. No, no, no fake. Okay. All right, Luke chapter 22, verse 14. And when the hour was come, he sat down and the twelve apostles with him. How many were with him? Twelve. Twelve were with him. One of those was who? Judas Iscariot. He was a good guy. Good guy. But I just want to, just, we're not going to deal with that too much, but maybe he, he was there. Um, in verse 15, and, and he said unto them, With desire I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, I will not eat I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. So, very likely, um, and I'm saying very likely, there's, there's the chance is this, because of this Passover meal that they were now taking, um, before the communion was first instituted, was why there was a meal in the future that was observed before the ordinance, what they called the Lord's Supper. We, we often refer to this one as the Last Supper. Right? If you see a picture drawn of this where all the apostles were sitting, Jesus in the middle, and John leaning on him, you know, we'd see this. It, it, we're going to title that the Last Supper, right? And so we, we, we find that kind of thing there. So probably, I, I'm just making a, an assumption here, the reason that they were um, uh, maybe in the New Testament later on that they had a meal before is because they were imitating the whole thing. And so we, we find that kind of situation. Um, there's no instruction to keep the Passover for the New Testament, right? We're not, we're not to keep that. We're not, nor, nor to partake in any other meal in conjunction with the ordinance. That, that, that wasn't there. Um, but he, he says there uh, in verse 19, 
Look at verse 19. We're still in Luke chapter 22, verse 19. And he took bread and gave thanks and brake it and gave unto them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. This is given for you. Now, we had a history lesson during the song service, right? We're going to have a little bit of an English lesson in the message this morning, all right? So the word you in our King James Bible is a second person plural pronoun. Okay, now in, in, in modern English, you can be first or second. If I could say, hey, you, I'm talking about one person, or I could say, you, I'm talking about, hey, you, uh, you need to come with me, I'm talking about the whole group, or I could say, hey, you need to come, I'm talking about one. But in the King James Bible, that the English that's used, when it's you, it's talking about corporately. You see, the statement was given corporately to the church, to the group of them, not individually. So his body was given for them as a whole, as a church. Now, um, I want you then, we're going to, yeah, we're going to move away from, go back, I probably had you keep too many plays, but go back to Ephesians. Back to Ephesians in chapter 5. Um, we use it, Ephesians because it has a lot of the specific things when it's dealing with the church, and that's why we, we go back to that place it's just clearer there. It's, it's throughout all the New Testament epistles, but, but it's clear that chapter 5, Ephesians in chapter 5, um, we, we see what, what I just mentioned when he said, you, this I give for you, it was for, for them as, as a whole, as a, as a body and as a group. And so in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 24, he says this, Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything, Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and, what does that say? Gave himself for it. So, what, you know what I like about this? You know, with these illustrations that the Lord gives us, he's given us an illustration that we can kind of wrap our mind around something. He says, his relationship with with the church and how the, the love and the, 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 the dedication one to another is how the Lord loves His church. He said He loves His church the way that, that a husband, a good husband, would love his wife. He said, well, I don't know what that's like. Well, listen, how a good husband should. And how you would imagine, ladies, how you would imagine a good husband would love you. Men, how you would imagine if, you know, the girl that you haven't met yet, that man, if I, if I met her, I would love her that way. That's what he said. That's how the Lord loves his church. And he gave himself for, for it. Um, in, in Luke twenty two nineteen, 19, Jesus, we just looked at that. Jesus was talking about his life, his body that was being given for them is what the, 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 the tense of that, that word that I, give, that, I, that I give to you. He was talking about it's being given. It's, it's, in Ephesians, Paul ta uh, spoke of it as an action that had been completed. It's already been done now. And back there when it was first being instituted, he's saying, here's what I'm, here's what I'm doing for you, right? I'm giving for you. Over here, now Paul's talking about something that he's already done. It's been done. It's completed. It's, it's the action is likewise the cup. He says the same thing. It is now in the process of being spilt for them. So he came, listen, Jesus came to die in our place. Amen? That's his purpose. He came to die in our place. He, it, was, it was as good, the moment that he came, it was as good as spilt already. His blood was as good as spilt already. When he came, he made the decision, that's what I'm going to do. But I want you to notice the purpose given here by the Lord Himself. Let's go back there, just real quick, back to uh, Luke chapter 22. I know I'm getting you a flip around, but it's just a few spots. So get, get extra fingers. No, I don't know how you do it. But Luke chapter 22, and He says something here um, in verse 20. He says, Likewise, also the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the, what are those next two words? New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. So, the purpose that the Lord gives here 
and giving himself is the New Testament. Though we look back at the moment that Christ gave his body and his blood on the cross, we do look back at that day. Amen? We certainly look back at that day. But it was intended for us to look forward to the New Testament. He said, that's, I've given it for this, for this thing, this very purpose of, of this church that's going to continue. He said, I'm going to go. He said, I'm going to go to be with the Father, but you're going to do greater things because you're going to remain. And he said, listen, yes, I want you to look back and remember what I gave to you. Those guys, they had no, they had no business being hanging out together. We have a tax collector and a fisherman. Y'all like tax collectors? Anyway, nobody, I mean, they didn't either, right? And, and there was a time that a couple of those fellas, they, they said, hey, can we, mama, mama, can you go see if Jesus will let us sit on the right hand and the left hand of Jesus? They wanted, some of the 12 decided, you know what, we want to start vying for the best positions in the kingdom. And they, they began to have a little disagreement. Jesus said, these aren't people that, listen, Jesus knew humans without Christ in the midst is going to be a mess. It's going to be a mess. And we're going to be this thing, he said. So he's trying to, he's trying to develop that. I, I think I mentioned last week, he said, he, it was in that same time, he, he washed their feet. So this is what we're going to have to serve. I want to teach you to serve one another. We're going to have to, we're going to have, to have a different... We're going to have to have a different view of each other. It's going to be different. It's not natural. It's, it becomes, it's unnatural. It's not, it's not in our flesh. So he said, listen, though you're going to look back to the cross and what I've done with my body was broken, I want you to look to, my, this my blood is, is the New Testament. The New Testament which is spilt for you. The new covenant with God's people. The coming again of the Savior. Back to 1 Corinthians now. 1 Corinthians in chapter 11. And, and now we're, get down again, verse 26. The Paul is here given this, this, little, this, this bit of instruction on this thing. He says, verse 26, For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till He come. Till He come. The purpose isn't only to look back at what was completed but to, to look forward to His coming. When He, when he was go, ascending into heaven and they're sitting there looking and watching Him and the angel comes and says, what are you looking for? What are you looking at? Can you kind of see the angel? What are y'all looking at? gone. But He's coming back the same way He left, okay? Hey, listen, the whole New Testament deals with this. Con- listen, we're, not, we're, we're looking for His return. Amen? He's coming. And even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. He said, listen, this, this whole thing isn't about... Unity doesn't just come by, by what He did, yes? By what he did, but also till he comes, we're looking towards that hope. That's that's our. He's coming again. Uh, listen, uh, uh, that is our hope, our promise. That's our purpose. That's what that's what we're unified be, be, behind the fact that Jesus Christ is coming again to receive his bride. So number five, wherefore? Number five, wherefore? Look at verse thirty-three. Wherefore? My brethren, when you come together to eat, tarry one for another. I, I, I want to jump ahead for a little bit. We're going to get back to this other part, but because I want us to see this in context. You see, what, what he's dealing with is this, this, this thing of this church coming together. To, it's supposed to be for the better, but it was for the worse. There were some divisions. There was some, some heresies. There were some issues, and he begins to talk about these things. What's the purpose of it? And he said, let's, let's come together, tarry one for another. Wait on other folks. Be with them. This is what's the importance of this whole thing. And so the whole instruction of the apostle on this ordinance is all wrapped up in the unity of the church. They were making grave errors in this observance of the ordinance. Grave errors. And it had become more divisive than it was unifying. Grave errors have grave consequences. All right, look at verse 27. He said, Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. So let's clear something up right here. I want to clear something up with this word 
Uh, again, we're, we're still a little bit of English class. Sorry, but things matter. Words matter. Amen? We call this the Word of God. We, he's called the Word. So I'd say words matter. Right? So notice something about this, this one word, unworthily. Okay? So it's an adverb, not an adjective. Okay? This is important. I'm going to show you why it's important right here. Because of what it's explaining or modifying. So an adjective, this is our adjective side, right? Adjective over here, adverb over here. An adjective describes a noun, okay? Where the, were it the word unworthy, it would describe a person. So if the word there was, you're doing this unworthy, it would describe a noun. It would describe the, 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 the person that's, that's taking this. By the way, can I just say this here? None of us are worthy. No, 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 we're, we're all unworthy. If a condition was to become worthy, um, None of us will ever be worthy of Christ giving his life. That's, that's, uh, amen? I mean, that's kind, of what we, that's kind of what we find and we teach and we preach the whole word of God. But an adverb over here, unworthily, describes an action. So what, what, what he was dealing with here is the church was observing this ordinance in an unworthy manner. It was, it was done unworthily. It was their action that was unworthy. Uh, look at verse 28. He says, but, but let a man examine himself, and, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. So there's a word here that has stricken fear into the hearts and minds of many church members throughout the years. I've heard it all over the place. And that's the word damnation. That's pretty, I don't like that word. You know, he says there again, he says, For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself. Okay? Um, if there's something that damnation is involved with it, I'm a little bit nervous. Right? Matter of fact, if there's damnation involved with that thing, you know what I want to do? I want to flee. I want to get away from that thing, right? Uh, so here's here's so so I've, 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 many people have have gotten this way, got this word damnation and becomes something. So obviously, can I just say obviously it doesn't mean if a believer partakes in the ordinance improperly that they're going to be damned. If you don't if you don't do this right, you're going to be separated from God. No, no, we know that doesn't work, right? So so listen, no, it, it means to be judged. So sometimes the words, the word choices that are here, it kind of seems, but there's something else there, but it really just means, in other places we see that it means to be judged. The, the impropriety in this is the schisms, the, the divisions. And, and it says here, they're not discerning the importance of the Lord's body, which is His church. That's what he says there at the end of, of verse 20, 29. He says, not discerning the Lord's body. He said, the problem is, is you're treating this thing as secondary, not first of all. He said, That's, that, that church, he said, that church, that, that, that thing, I, I've actually, I've set people in there as it pleases me. He said, you know what else he did? He said, I fit them, uh, they fit together, compacted, fit, fit together as it pleases him. He said, Jesus said, I gave my life for, for that. What do you mean? He doesn't give his life for me individually? Yeah, it's, yes. That's the only way we can be a thing, part of that thing. He says, because I'm going to leave and that body is what's going to continue the work of the ministry. I, I'm, not, I'm done. The angels aren't coming. Jesus isn't coming. He's going to send the Spirit. The Spirit doesn't... Can I tell you, the Spirit of God is not an evangelist. The Spirit of God deals with the believer. Right? 
So, so God said the, the working is going to be this church, and when we ha- have despise it to the scent, to the place that we despise that thing and, and draw away from that thing in a way that we would cause divisions and, and, and have these heresies and these schisms and all these things, He said, you're not discerning the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, number six, what do we do? So what do we do? Verse 28. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. So first, he says, here's what you do. What do we do first? Um, Examine yourself, whether you are in this division and heresy. Am 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 I part of that thing? He says, then eat and drink. Participate in this ordinance of unity of the church. I can't tell you how many people I've seen church members see and say, no, nah, I'm, I'm not going to. I'm not going to. I'm just. I'm not really ready. Like we didn't announce it. Like there wasn't a time. And they're like, you know, I just, I just don't feel like I'm ready. I've got some things. I'm, I'm just not ready. I've seen it. I don't know if y'all have seen it. I've seen, I've seen it over and over in times. Because you know what? They got hung up on that word damnation. And by the way, I get that. Damnation kind of grips a little fear in us. And they say, you know what, I'm, I'm just not going to participate in that because I'm just, you know, my heart's not, you know, I just, ah, you know. So the very purpose uh, of observing this, this ordinance is to promote unity in the church, to draw us together. Remember, the reason why we're here is because of what he did, Right? And the reason we're here is because he's coming again. And and if it's and if we don't do something, just like the song we sang earlier, then people are going to be shipwrecked. So we need to not be worrying about the color of the carpet or the paint on the walls or what kind of you know what I'm saying? Wow. So one one that decides to forego participation because they aren't ready spiritually, right? Yeah, I just I'm not going. I'm just. I'm not really ready. Um, can, can I say that doesn't remove the judgment? <laughs> okay, so listen, can I say because you're part of, I mean, you're, you're part of the division. See, you're part of the division. You're already part of the division. You've already become part of the, the heresy. You're already there. And so the time comes, we're going we're gonna to try to, to deal with this thing. And the one says, yeah, I'm just not ready. Well, okay. Let me tell you what you do. First, examine yourself. Deal with this thing. Because if you are part of this thing unworthily, not, so I'm just going to, by not doing it, I'm going to get out of the judgment that God has for me. Well, that's, that's like saying I'm going to live in sin, and because I don't do this activity, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be out of judgment. It's, isn't that kind of weird? Sometimes our, well, you know what I like to call that? Stinking thinking. It's some stinking thinking. Um, look at verse 30. It says, for this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. Listen, it isn't the taking of the bread and the cup that causes this in unbelievers. I have seen a few people, when we say a drink, and they drank, and I've seen, I've seen several people, I've seen them just fall over dead right there. Not really. Never. Never have I seen that. Um, you know, they go and... You know, no, no, listen, that the, the, the isn't like, you know, you, you're supposed to take the juice first, not the bread first. You know, I never see somebody, I, I bit before we bit, am I, am I okay? No, listen, that, the, the, it isn't the taking of the bread and the cup that causes this in unbelievers, or, or, I'm sorry, in believers. It's the divisions. It's the heresies that believers were getting into. This is what was trying to be manifested what was, what was trying to be exposed so that we might see our own issues. That's what he's dealing with. The, the issue here is not, um, you know, wow, you just kind of you got it a little mixed up and you're supposed to do this. I'd be, I mean, listen, if it was me and I'm like, I'm afraid to do this wrong, I'd just not do it. But that's not the issue that he's getting at at all. It's about what's going on already. This is the Lord's church. Amen? He takes its protection and continuation very seriously. The Bible tells us even the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Okay, can I tell you what? He's not going to let us prevail against it either. You hear what I'm saying to you this morning? He's not going to let us prevail against His church either. His, his church is too important. It's, 
It's what's left to reach the rest of the world. That's what he's chosen to do. Um, I wish God would, would just continue using angels or something else, or God would just speak from heaven. I'd rather because I know how unworthy we are. I am. You know, the way to discern the body of Christ and to be in the right place is with this church. That's what he's talking about. Look at verse 31. He says, For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But, if, but when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. He said, so, so, so what do we do here? He said, listen, this, I take a good look at me. So this time of communion, when we get to there, we're here in a couple of weeks, that time, and by the way, we ought to do this all the time, but there's a time that we corporately do it. See, this is what, this is, what is so neat about that. Should I examine myself regularly? Nope, just wait for that one occasion. No, no, that's, that doesn't make sense. Should I just only think about the Lord's death on that? When we're, when we're, no, no, that's not what he, he's saying. It's a time that we corporately all together are dealing with this. It becomes something that we get a hold of and deal with. It. What, a, what, a, what a wonderful thing when we all get together and say, you know what, I've kind of just you know, had some issues here. And hit some, but you know what? What Jesus did to bring me here, what he's doing, this is more important than me. And so I examine myself and judge our, if we'll judge ourselves, it's a wonderful thing. And I will take a real look at am I engaged? Am I engaged in division? Am I pointing in the heresies? Not not no folks, not like this. I don't mean in a way like, yeah, I went not me. No, uh -uh, this, it could be me. Not that. Examine. Can I I think the examine takes a moment. Takes a moment. Maybe, you know, I'm not saying it takes a long time, it takes, but it takes a moment. But it actually takes a moment to say, let me look at me. Where, where am I? How am I discerning the Lord's body? What, how important is that to me, what he's done? God may have to do a little chastising to get me to recognize what he says. That's what he says in verse 32. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. I'll tell you what, God may have to do a little work on you and say, listen, buddy, you're not where you think you are. It hurts a little bit. But can I tell you what? It sure is a lot better than the condemnation of the world. Finally. finally I know we're long. I know we're long. This, I knew this could be long. I'll make it up to you next week. Maybe. Um, no, I will. I will. Probably. Finally. Number seven. Finally. Verse 33. So wherefore, my brethren... When you come together, so, so listen, he says, wherefore, he said, listen, all of that, let me sum it up. Wherefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that you come not together unto condemnation. And the rest will I set in order, will I come. <laughs> I wonder how that worked out. The condemnation of this ordinance is the result of not coming together in unity. The Lord loves His church. It is, it's His body. It's, it's continuing work to reach the world with the good news of redemption. So, are we coming together, church, for the better or for the worse? Let us each examine ourselves in this thing. That's the purpose of that ordinance. Listen, the close my Bible. Amen. I want to just say something. We're going to close. Um, there has to be a real look at ourself. Not a not a smooth over. It's a time. I, I believe this time was, I think we can make it light. I think we can make it so common or light that it just becomes a, a, a some churches do it weekly, some do it monthly, some do it. He says as oft as you do this. That word oft doesn't mean often like it says. It means when you do it. It's not an often, it's, but, it, but as often as you do. Every time is maybe is a better way to say it or another way to say it um, is is. When I say a better, I hate saying a better way because that means I don't think they did something wrong. I think in our thinking, 
a better way to think about it would be to say, when you do it, do it like this. Listen, folks, this is, this is impo- this, his church is so important to him that God wants to do a work in our lives, in our hearts. So, as we look towards this thing, and this is, this is, a, this is a teaching message today. Sunday morning, so I thought we'd do that. Went, well, it's just, I want us to see when we get to this thing, we do it in a way that honor God and would do something for His body, that we might discern His body. Let's all stand together. Father, I pray that you'd help us this morning.